Joining me now, Secretary of State John Kerry. Mr. Secretary, it's good to see you. Let me start off with whether you know anything new about the downing of this Malaysian airliner uh, from intelligence uh, information. What do we now know for certain? Well, we know for certain a lot more, Candy. We know for certain that uh, for in the last month, uh, there's been a major flow of arms and weapons. There was a convoy uh, about, about several weeks ago, about 150 vehicles with armed personnel carrier, multiple rocket launchers, tanks, artillery, all of which crossed over from Russia into uh, the eastern part of Ukraine and was turned over to the separatists. We know for certain that the separatists have a proficiency that they've gained by training from Russians as to how to use these sophisticated uh, SA-11 systems. We know they have the system. We know that they had this system to a certainty uh, on Monday the 14th beforehand because the social media was reporting it and tracking it. And on Thursday of the event, we know that within hours of this event, this particular system passed through two towns right in the vicinity of the shootdown. We know because we observed it by imagery that at the moment of the shootdown, we detected a launch from that area, and our trajectory shows that it went to the aircraft. We also uh, know to a certainty that uh, the social media immediately afterwards saw reports of separatists bragging about knocking down a plane. Uh, and then the so-called defense minister, self-appointed of uh, the People's Republic of Donetsk, Igor Strelkov, posted a social media report that bragging about the shootdown of a uh, transport plane, at which point when it became clear with civilian, they pulled down that particular report. We know from intercepts voices, which have been correlated to intercepts that we have, that those are in fact the voices of separatists talking about the shootdown of the plane. They have shot down some 12 uh, planes, aircraft, in the last uh, months or so, uh, two of which were major transport planes. Uh, and now we have a video showing the, 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 a launcher moving back uh, through a particular area there uh, out into Russia with a missing, at least one missing uh, 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 missile on it. So we, we have enormous sort of input about this, uh, which points fingers. Uh, and now we at have who, these horrendous. Mr. Secretary, at who? Well, it, bas it, it basically, it, it, it's, it's pretty clear that this is a system that was transferred from Russia uh, in the hands of separatists. We know with confidence, with confidence, that the Ukrainians did not have such a system anywhere near the vicinity at that point in time. So it obviously points a very clear finger at the separatists. And that's why President Obama. And, and the international community are demanding a full-fledged investigation, which Russia said they would do. Pro-Russian separatists have reportedly removed almost 200 bodies from the crash site uh, and are continuing to refuse to allow investigators full access to the site. Uh, has this investigation already been compromised, sir? Well, it's been seriously compromised, uh, you know, notwithstanding President Putin and Russia saying that they were going to help to enforce the idea of a full investigation that was uh, that was uh, had integrity and access. Uh, we haven't. On Friday, uh, the monitors and the people trying to get in there to secure the site were given 75 minutes. Yesterday, they were given three hours. Drunken, I mean, literally drunken separatist soldiers are, are piling bodies into trucks unceremoniously. Today we have reports of drunken separatists piling the remains of, of, of people into trucks in an unceremonious fashion, actually removing them from the location. They are interfering with the evidence in the location. They have removed, we understand, some airplane parts. We know to a certainty that we saw the launch from this area of what we deem to be an SA-11 because of the altitude, 33,000 feet, and because of the trajectory. We have the trajectory recorded. We know that it occurred at the very moment that this 
aircraft disappeared from the radar screen. We know that the so-called defense minister of the People's Republic of Donetsk, Mr. Igor Streltov, actually uh, posted a, 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 a bragging social media posting of having shot down a military transport. And then when it became apparent that it was civilian, they pulled it down from the social but, media. But Secretary we, Kerry... have, we, we have voices that we have overheard of separatists in Russian bragging about the shoot down and then subsequently taking down social media. But, but... It is critical. And this is a very, very critical moment for Russia to step up publicly and join in the effort in order to make sure there is a full-fledged investigation that the investigators and people who are coming to help from outside, the uh, ICAO, the uh, FBI, the, N the National Transportation Safety Board, we're sending people over, others are sending people, experts who have an ability to be able to put these facts together so no one will have doubt no fingers will be pointed about conspiracies, about ideology and politics governing this. We want the facts. And the fact that the separatists are controlling this in a way that is preventing people from getting there, even as the site is tampered with, makes its own statement about culpability and responsibility. And what, what is the U.S. doing about that today? What is different uh, in your approach to Russia since this plane crash? If you believe that they have uh, control or some say so over what these well, separatists yesterday, do. Well, mm -hmm. yesterday, Candy, I had a direct conversation with my counterpart, Foreign Minister Lavrov. It was a direct and uh, tough conversation. We'll see if anything happens as a result of that. I'm confident that President Obama will shortly be talking yet again to President Putin in order to find a way with very specific steps to move forward. But President Obama, I remind you again, the day before this event, unilaterally moved even before this to put tougher sanctions in place, what we call sector sanctions, sanctions that begin to do something about their energy companies, about their defense companies, about their banks. The point is that we're trying to do this in a thoughtful uh, way with a maximum amount of diplomatic energy and pressure. And it would help enormously if some countries in Europe uh, that have been a little reluctant to move would now recognize this wake up call and join the United States and President Obama in taking the lead and also stepping up. Because we have 4% of Russia's trade is with the United States. 50% of their engagement is with Europe. So we are trying to encourage our European friends to realize this is a wake-up call. And hopefully they will also join us in these tougher sanctions. Our embassy in Kiev has laid out a string of evidence tying the shoot down to Russia. In your view, is Russia responsible for these deaths? Well, the question of responsibility is going to be adjudicated, obviously, in an investigation, providing we can get that full and fair investigation. But there are an enormous array of facts that point at Russia's support for and involvement in this effort. Russia, there are, I mean, some of the separatist leaders, George, are Russian. Russia has armed the separatists. Russia has supported the separatists. Russia has trained the separatists. Russia continues to refuse to call publicly for the separatists to engage in behavior that would lend itself to a resolution of this issue. We track, we ourselves track the imagery of the launch of this uh, surface-to-air missile, missile, of the disappearance of the aircraft from the radar at that time. And then later, when one of the leaders of the social, of the uh, movement, who, uh, the Igor Strelkov, who is the self-proclaimed defense minister of the People's Republic of Donetsk, he posted a, a social media bragging about the takedown of a military transport and when it turned out to be a civilian he then quickly removed it from the social media now drunken separatists are stacking bodies into the back of trucks do you believe europe is now prepared to go along with greater sanctions well we hope europe will be obviously we we think this is a wake-up call for countries in europe do we have definitive proof that the russians were directly involved in the downing of this airliner. Well, uh, Bob, when you say uh, definitive proof, the Russian, uh, the investigation is going to draw conclusions that are, quote, definitive. What we have 
There's a lot of evidence that points in a direction that raises very, very serious questions. We know they had an SA-11 right in the vicinity hours before this shoot. The social media has documented this. We have intercepted voices that have been documented by our people through intelligence as being separatists who are talking to each other about the shoot down. And we know that uh, we have a video now of a transporter removing an SA-11 system back into Russia and it shows a missing uh, missile or so. Well, what's happening is really grotesque and it is contrary to everything that President Putin and Russia said that they would do. Uh, there, are, there are reports of drunken separatist soldiers unceremoniously piling bodies into trucks. Here's what's currently bothering everybody. Drunken separatists have been piling bodies into trucks and removing them from the site. We know that they had an SA-11 system in the vicinity uh, literally hours before the shootdown took place. There's social media records of that. The social media showed them with uh, this system moving through the very area where we believe the shootdown took place hours before it took place. Social media, which is an extraordinary tool, obviously, in all of this, has posted recordings of uh, separatists bragging about the shootdown uh, of a plane at the time, right after it took place. The defense minister, so-called self-appointed of the People's Republic of Donetsk, uh, Mr. Igor Strelkov, actually posted a bragging uh, statement on the social media about having shot down a transport. And then when it became apparent it was civilian, mm -hmm. they quickly removed that particular posting. Are you, we, are you bottom lining here that Russia provided the weapon? The, uh, there's a story today uh, confirming that, but we have not, within the administration, made a determination. But it's pretty clear when, you know, there's a buildup of extraordinary circumstantial evidence. You know, I'm a former prosecutor. I've tried cases on cir circumstantial evidence. It's powerful here. But even more importantly, we picked up the imagery of this launch. We know the trajectory. We know where it came from. We know the timing, and it was exactly at the time that this aircraft disappeared from the radar. We're in conversation now with our European counterparts. We hope this is a wake-up call for some countries in Europe that have been reluctant to move. And the United States has been working diligently with Europe, trying to bring Europe along. They've included additional sanctions. We think, frankly, that they may need to be tougher, and, and, and it may well be uh, that the Dutch and others will help lead that effort because this has to be a wake-up call to Europe that this has to change.